Hello everyone, Melody here, Mama of Four and our blended family of six. Today is our third video in our series about early literacy. So if you're interested in talking about vocabulary and building your child's vocabulary in those preschool years, stick with me and let's talk about how we build our words and our vocabulary. As I mentioned in my first two videos, if you haven't checked those out, please do. Early literacy or the ability to read and write are important life skill sets and they are not biologically guaranteed. These are things that we have to actively work towards in order to learn. There are many stages of literacy and in this video series we are talking about the early or pre-literate stages. I'm not necessarily referring to a specific age, although most of these milestones do occur between the ages of birth and six to seven years old. A question that I often get asked is, what curriculum do I recommend for preschoolers? The answer to that question is none. I don't recommend any curriculum for preschoolers. There are simply too many things in our day-to-day -day world that we can learn from in or before we should force a curriculum. That being said, if you found a curriculum that you really like and that you can incorporate into your day and that your child enjoys and it's fun, do it. There's nothing wrong with having a curriculum. I just don't have one in particular that I would advise. I will be talking in this video about different resources that you can use and activities that you can do with your child and why you should do them in order to build early reading skills or pre-literate skills. In the last video, we talked about letter recognition, understanding the sounds of letters. I believe that this is an important prerequisite before we learn on um, learn how to build words. Another prerequisite to building words in actual reading and writing is just to have a good vocabulary. So we are developing our vocabulary from birth, from the moment our child is born, possibly sooner, depending on who you ask, we are exposing our children to the vocabulary of our specific language. Between the ages of birth and three years old, the brain is pruning itself, if you will. As infants, we are born with more neurons than we will ever have at any other time in our life. And so as we get older, our brain kind of just stops using the ones that aren't getting used and focuses more on those neurons that are receiving the most attention. It's securing those connections, if you will. Between birth and three is the, is the biggest time where that pruning is happening. When a child is under the age of three, typically they have the ability to hear all varieties of sounds. Sounds that we as English speakers don't hear anymore because our brain has said, okay, well, we don't need to know all the unique specific sounds of Mandarin or of Italian or French. This is the reason why when you have people that learn languages when they're older, you'll have some people that no matter how hard they try, they just can't make a certain sound. Like some people struggle with the rolling R in Spanish. Uh, some languages for, have trouble with the V sound that we have in English. This contributes to our accent. And you can have a person who was born and raised with a certain language that maybe as an adult moves and is fluent in this other language, but they may never be able to reproduce the sounds exactly the same. They'll always have that accent. And that's because when they were young, their brain was exposed to certain sounds and it stopped wiring for other sounds. That's just something to keep in mind, a good reason to be exposing your child to different sounds from birth, different languages. A note about bilingual children or multilingual children. Some people argue that it is damaging to a child's vocabulary for them to learn multiple languages. I believe that this argument is based in ignorance and it's just simply not true. It is typical for a bilingual or a multilingual child to speak at a later stage because they're processing so many different languages and they might mix those languages when they speak when they're younger. However, their brain is doing a lot of amazing things and as they get older and all those connections secure themselves, 
they are actually at a great advantage. They probably understand a lot more than they're able to express when they're very young, but please don't take that delay in expression as a negative. In fact, I would say if you have the opportunity to expose your children to multiple languages on a day-to-day -day or on a, on a personal level within your family, take that opportunity. That is something that you can never get back. Because again, once those connections are made, you can't rebuild all of those connections later. But regardless if you're speaking multiple languages, two languages, or one language, when your babies are young, your toddlers, your young children, speak to them. Speak to them all the time. Talk, 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 talk. That is the best thing you can do for building their, their vocabularies. You'll hear about, and I believe I spoke briefly about motheries versus parenties in the last video. I will touch on that again. It's simply a higher pitched voice that you use to speak to your children. It does not mean substituting your words for baby talk. Please avoid baby talk when you're developing a vocabulary. Also, we talked about sign language. In the last video, we talked about just the alphabet and using signs with that. But I would encourage you to also use sign language for the different things in your home. So some people, when my children were younger, criticized the way that I spoke to them because they were like, well, they're babies, they don't understand you, or they're toddlers, they don't understand you, they're little kids, they don't understand you, because I would speak to them with a full vocabulary like I would anyone else. Often these judgments were made critically, and I kind of just ignored it. Today, my children are well-spoken, they have excellent vocabularies, they understand a lot of things, they feel comfortable and confident to ask when they don't understand what a word is, it doesn't bother them to learn new words or to say, hey, what does that mean? And continue to expand their vocabulary. So I do encourage you, while motheries and parentees is a great way to speak to your baby when they're young, just for the facial expressions and the tone of voice, as they get older and even when they're very young, use a complete vocabulary when you're talking to them. We also talked about the importance of face-to-face -face communication. I will reiterate that because I believe it's so important to have that face-to-face -face communication. It really does impact our vocabularies and our ability to communicate effectively. So just remember, talk, 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 sing songs. That's a great way to develop vocabulary. ASL is a great way to develop vocabulary. Exposure to different language was, languages when your child is young is a big deal. There's a spot on me. How do I get rid of that spot? All of these things will help your child develop their vocabulary. Having a diverse vocabulary will help your child immensely when it comes to reading and writing. Reading in and of itself is a good way to develop vocabulary. So read books with your child, figure out where they're at in their reading level and always be reading to them a step ahead so that they're being exposed to good things. Some people will say, well, no, I shouldn't read this to my kid because they don't understand it yet. And while yes, you should probably not sit down with your infant and try and read uh, Pride and Prejudice or Crime and Punishment because there's a huge gap there. You can read above where they're at to help scaffold that development. The next stage I wanna talk about is word development. So when I say vocabulary development versus word development, I'm talking about the ability to actually take those letters, stick them together and build words. This is more of the writing, uh, reading portion. An important milestone in reading is understanding how we put words together and the role that they play in expression. If your child grasps letters, they are ready to start building words. Just remember to keep it fun. Great at-home activities for building words with your infants and your toddlers is reading. Read those books. Point to the words as you say them and encourage your child to find the picture when you point to the word or if you point to the picture, have them point to the word, especially if you have those simple books where they just have a few words in them. Some people might be surprised and the kindergarten level, there's a surprising number of children that don't understand books. Just having your child understand the front of the book versus the back of the book and understanding that we follow along with our words from 
left to right is huge. Kids don't often understand that. So when you're reading, if you're reading along and you're pointing to the words as you go, that actually is a great help for them to understand just those basic things. If the kindergarten teacher, if you send them to public school or at home when you're ready, if you can avoid spending a lot of time explaining from left to right, you're going to save yourself a lot of frustration and save a lot of sit down work time that you could have prevented just by reading books with your kids and using your finger and following along. For young children, there's some great videos on how you can do letter of the week. Now, I think we talked about doing a letter each week and we talked about using the letters in their name because that's most important. But something you can do, and we did at home, was we had a poster that we built. It would have a letter or a blend or a digraph on it. So like SH or um, ND, those different sounds or the common sound combinations. And we would have it up on a poster. You have your, your letter combo or your letter right there. And then we had a whole bunch of pictures and words that were Velcroed to the board. And the kids would try and match the pictures and the words. We would try and find things all week long that had that sound and we would add them to our board. You could do this with a whiteboard so you didn't have to go to the trouble to make a huge poster board with Velcro and all that kind of stuff. You could do it with the poster board and Velcro. You could do it with magnets on your fridge if you have some great, you can get great magnet resources. You can even get magnets that have like, you can write on them so you don't have to like buy specialty word magnets. You can get the magnets where it has like a, you cut it out the size you want the magnet to be. And then with a marker, you can write the words on either permanent marker, or sometimes you can get the dry erase magnets and you can put them on your board and move those around. Resources that you might like for building words. Two of the, my favorite resources when the kids were little were actually videos. One was the Talking Words Factory. We talked about Leapfrog, the Talking Letters Factory. Well, they've got the Talking Words Factory that the kids also really enjoy. PBS Station also has a great show called Word World, which I thought was a lot of fun. There's all kinds of shows and videos out there. But again, if you're like me and you like to maximize on your time, perhaps when you're choosing that downtime for your kids, maybe choose shows that have some educational value to them. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have fluff TV in your home. Me as an adult, I love just relaxing, having fluff TV. But with my kids, they really enjoyed playing games or watching shows that were educational because that's what they were used to. It's kind of like when they're really little, if they never drink juice and then you give them water with a little bit of juice added into it. They really enjoy it. But if you just give them straight up Pepsi, then they're going to think watered down juice is disgusting. It's kind of like what you're used to. I don't know. Am I the only parent that watered my kids juice down? Did you do that? I did that. So anyway, building words, building vocab vocabulary is a huge part of early literacy. If you take the time to do that, you can do it for free. You can get books at the library. Conversation is always free. There are all kinds of inexpensive resources that you can get either at your local Walmart or online, however you wanna do it. Preschool does not need to be expensive. The most expensive part of preschool should be the snacks because we all need good snacks and the coffee because when you have a preschooler, you're probably drinking a lot of coffee. But other than that, that's today's video, early literacy. Talk to your kids, build words, have fun with it. Don't stress about a curriculum unless you want to. And then hopefully you're not stressing about it because it's what you love. Thank you for joining me for this quick video. I will have one more video coming out in this series where we are going to talk about developing writing skills specifically. Until then, I will catch you next time.